and welcome to Megger's Technical Support Videos, where today we will be discussing the three-phase turns ratio and winding resistance form 56000, how to use winding resistance test wizard. Here we have our three-phase winding resistance and turns ratio test form. For the purpose of this video, I've selected a DYN1 vector diagram, which is a delta primary with a Y with a neutral secondary. On the primary, we have a de-energized tap changer with five taps, and on the secondary, an on-load tap changer with 33 taps. If we scroll down, we find ourselves in the test section. You can see resistance primary with the primary test to be performed, and on the top right-hand co corner, the resistance test wizard. If we select this, the MTO test wizard will pop up with more selections and customizations of tests. For instance, we have the primary, in which we can choose which tap on our primary we wish to test and which phase we wish to test on that tap. So do we wish to test all phases or do we wish to select which phase we pr prefer to test? We also have the choice of our secondary winding in which we have an on-load tap changer. You can select which taps you wish to test. So right now it is set to test from 16 lower to 16 raise. Once completed, if you have testing in all phases, it will then continue going 16 raised to 16 lower to keep the direction of flux the same and to reduce the time, uh, the te total test time. But you can also select a different range of taps. So for instance, for this video, we will select two lower to one raise and it will test our, our taps from two lower to one raise. Also at the bottom, you can t uh, see we have the make before break transition recording for your OLTC to ensure the functionality of your onload tap changer. On the top right hand corner, we have our dual winding tests. You can see that you can choose primary and secondary. And if you had a tertiary, you could choose primary and tertiary. This tests both windings at the same time. So you can select which top tap you are on your de-energized tap changer and which taps you plan to test on your onload tap changer. Notice when choosing the phase to tests, you have H1 to H3 as well as XO to, or X1 to XO on a single test. So you are testing your, your primary and secondary at the same time. Uh, and you also have, again, the make before break transition recording. Cl simply click to disable. If you have the check, you have it enabled. Now let's go through an example. Let's choose our secondary winding, uh, keeping the taps to lower to one raise and testing our X1 to XO phase. Once we have everything selected, we can select the test and up will pop our MTO test XP window. An error pops up asking us to please select a current. We can choose anywhere between 10 milliamps and 10 amps. And let's start at the left hand corner and work our way through the MTO test XP window. The top left hand corner you have your version release and then to the right of that you have your vector diagram. In this case a DYN1 and we are in our simulation mode. Below that you have your test commands. You have previous tap, you can start the test, you can move to the next tap, or you can exit the window. You will notice that this updates once we start the test that you can abort the test and then exit. Below that you have your test status. Right now we are in idle as it awaits us to choose our test settings and then start the test. This also gives you indications as co of communication between your MTO and also the updated status of the test during uh, performing the actual measurement. Below that you have your high voltage winding resistance and below that your low voltage winding resistance. Since we selected in our test selections that we wanted to test the secondary um, you can notice the X1 to XO phase illuminated in this teal box um, that we that it is ready for us to test the X1 to XO phase uh, tap two lower and you can see the orange box is awaiting our measurement. So you have your test number, your the actual tap you're testing followed by the current in which uh, it was used to perform that test the resistance, the measured resistance for each of your phases. So this is our X1 to XO phase. And then the stability of the current during that measurement, as well as the make before break condition, whether it passed or failed. 
To the right, we have our test settings. We've already saw that we have our test current. We can select between 10 milliamps and 10 amps. Below that, we have our reading stability indicator, which can be in percentage, in which the current must be st uh, st stable within this percentage, anywhere between 99.5 to 99.95% stable for the allotted time. I'm gonna, for the purpose of this video, lower this to three seconds. So once the current is 99.6% stable for three seconds, that equals our stability, our, our reading stability, and then we take that measurement and it records down here in the table. We can also change this to last digit in which it's plus or minus one of the final digit of your measurement. And once it gets to within that stability, again, three seconds and then takes the measurement. We can enable automatic data recording. Uh, it will prompt us to uh, manually save the first data point for each phase and then kick in the automatic data recording for every subsequent measurement. And below that, we have our make before break conditions. We can turn this off, or you can select the sensitivity for your make before break, depending on the manufacturer specifications. And this can range anywhere from five milliseconds to 100 milliseconds. And you have the option to close this once it's complete. So once we've gone through and we've selected all of our tests, we can go through and start the test. Down at the bottom right, you can see there's a small graph that will actually plot the resistance as we go through as well. So let's start the test. You can see we've changed to abort. The status is now charging to tap to lower. It, the stability, uh, waiting for the current to stabilize. Now we're measuring the resistance. We have our measurement. Our stability was 100%. The test current was 10.1 amps. And the measured resistance was 10.25 milliohms. Now that we're satisfied with that, we can save again the first result, and then it will start to do the automatic uh, saving after. Notice once we save the result, it is now monitoring the tap position from two lower to one lower uh, for our make before break condition. Now is when we would change the tap. Once the tap has been changed, while the monitoring has been going on, we can press the tap or press the next test. And now we are charging and measuring the resistance of the next uh, tap. Again, monitoring the tap once the measurement is completed, we change the tap and we press after the tap change, initiating the next test. Again, our plot is updating with the resistance values. We have completed our nominal tap resistance. So 10.5 amps, 9.509 milliohms and we've passed each one of our make before break conditions. It's still monitoring the tap position from nominal to one raise. Change the tap. We press after check after we change the tap and now it's measuring the resistance of your tap one raise. Once completed, it, you can notice it did discharge the phase. Now it's saving the results and we have the test finished and we can read our results. Again, we are at the resistance for the primary side so we need to scroll down to the secondary and we tested taps two lower to one raise we can see we have two lower the test current the stability the actual resistance all of these given at the top so you have your again the tap current stability and then the measured resistance in milliohms we come to our make before break we have our settings at five milliseconds. It passed each one, and now we've completed our winding resistance measurements on the secondary for taps two lower to one raise. Thank you for watching this installment of Megger's technical support videos, and tune into some of our other videos for more information.